Hi there, welcome to my garden here in the East Midlands. Just going to give you a quick tour today to show you what's looking its best as we get through to the second half of August. Got plenty of colour, still brightening up the garden and also lots of crops which we're enjoying eating every day. Fruits and vegetables galore. So come and join me here in my garden. The lilies are actually coming to an end but this is one of the double flowered rose lily varieties that I planted last year and this year it's looking absolutely glorious. This is rose lily leona, double flowered white variety. It's probably grown about twice as tall this year as it did last year. So perfect grown in a pot and giving me some lovely colour as we move through August. Rose Lily Ciara, another double flowered variety is also just coming to an end but providing some welcome colour. And the nice thing about these double flowered Rose Lily varieties is that they haven't got any pollen. So as you probably know, pollen in lilies can be poisonous to cats. They can get it on their coat, they can lick it off. But these double flowered Rose Lily varieties are a really good choice to grow if you've got cats in your garden. I've planted a centerpiece, Yucca Gloriosa variegata, in the center of some of my patio pots. And around the outside, I'll put a different bedding plant between summer and winter. So in the summer, I've got a lovely Nemesia at the moment, looking gorgeous around the yucca. And in the winter, well, I'll probably get rid of these plants October-ish time and replace with some violas or some pansies to give me some winter colour. You probably know these yuccas, they've got a really sharp tip at the end of their leaves. So do be careful if you're leaning over your plants. That's one reason this is called Adam's Needle as its common name. But they look really impactful in pots. They give you a centerpiece to enjoy all year round and you can change the bedding display between summer and winter. Now I've got a larger corner saw dogwood at the edge of this border but one of my favourite corner saw dogwood varieties is this little variety called Cornus Kelsey's Gold. I don't think it's that widely available anymore. Only grows about two and a half foot or so in height. It will lose its leaves in winter but look at this beautiful golden leaf. It really brightens up this border throughout the year and then the leaves take on some more orange and brown tones as we move through autumn before the leaves eventually fall. Now if you want you can take hardwood cuttings of corn in the winter and I've done that with some others. I took some cuttings last winter and those have rooted and I've managed to replicate the, the parent plant and I've got some others coming along here. You can just see how the beautiful colours turn as we move through the season, adding some extra interest. But this plant really shines out in your borders. It's very manageable. In the winter, I'll just give it a trim over, either taking some cuttings or trimming it back a little bit more to keep it a manageable size. I've got it towards the front of my border here, alongside a, a geranium ground covering geranium uh, Himalayansi and here that lovely also the sedum and this is called Mr Goodbutt just coming into flower at the front of my border. And if you like the stone crops or ice plants or sedums as well as Mr Goodbutt I've got this lovely variegated leaf variety called Lajos which really does brighten up the display. And I find these are good towards the front of borders. They're very manageable. They stay compact, basically. There's another little variety called Thundercloud alongside it. And I plant these alongside of my borders. Underneath here, some roses. And this is one of my favorite roses. This is Gertrude Jekyll, bred by David Austin. Beautiful little clusters of roses at the tips of the shoots forms a nice bush and the flowers themselves almost double very full of petals but with the most exquisite perfume 
when you sniff a rose and you want a good scent, then Gertrude Jekyll certainly won't disappoint you. Wonderful, wonderful rose. Good repeat flowering performance, just deadhead regularly and you'll get further flushes of blooms carrying on right the way through into autumn. I love growing summer flowering bulbs in pots. And this is a firm favorite. This is the summer hyacinth. It's called Galtonia candicans. Produces these lovely tall spires of bloom topped with heads of flower which open these beautiful white hanging bell-shaped flowers. Planted this in pots in the springtime and they come up and give you a flowering display usually around about the middle of July through into August. Some people say it fills that August colour gap. I was looking for something else to grow along the front of my border. It's quite dry soil here underneath a variegated holly and I've always wanted to grow this little variety of spurge or euphorbia called Mycinites. Just low ground covering variety it will just spread out along the front of my path. Flowered a little bit earlier in the year. New growth will be carried right the way through the whole of the year and through the winter. These stems will carry flowers next spring and then those will die back and new growth will come through. So these little euphorbias are perfect towards the front of the borders. And here alongside here I've got that lovely geranium roseanne. The bees adore it as well. This is a variety of hardy cranesbill or geranium. Completely hardy variety. Comes back every year. It will die down completely in the winter. Cut it all back. But the new stems will come up through the spring. And then by this time of year, you'll have a succession of flowers carried right the way through into the winter. If you ask me what my favourite long flowering hardy perennial is, then I find it's hard to beat Alstroemerias. These are two of my favourites. They're a dwarf compact variety of Alstroemeria. This one is called Sunshine and this one is called Havana. And I just grow them in small pots and the height of them, oh, they only put on about a foot of growth during the year, but they're quite hardy and they flower repeatedly through the year. When a flower stem has finished and the flowers have fallen, you just grasp the stem, pull it sharply from the base. You can see where the old flowers have finished there. So once that flower stem is finished, just pluck it up, pull it away from the rhizome um, inside the compost and new stems come up. So this will go on flowering. Started flowering probably around about the beginning of June, now through July, through August, and this will go on right the way through into autumn, giving you a beautiful succession of flowers. And the other thing is the bees love these blooms too. Just coming on down to my kitchen garden, courgettes cropping really well. This is a variety I'm very pleased with. It's called Primula. And one reason why I love this variety is it's got natural inbuilt resistance to powdery mildew. Sometimes you can find in summer your courgettes start getting a powdery fungus growth over the leaves which kills them off. But Primula is naturally resistant and producing a really good crop. It's nearly big enough to pick up or pick that for cooking over the weekend. Cook up these courgettes with some homemade tomato sauce as well. Keep them well watered. Courgettes of course need regular watering through the summer. So I do love Primula. Good crops and this should keep going for many more weeks now. And behind them I've got my climbing beans. One of my favourites is a flat podded variety called Vitalis. Let me have a look in here. Can you see in here? You can see good crops of beans in here now. Vitalis will go on cropping. Here we are. These are just a nice flat podded French bean and I'll get some good crops here. Have some of those with my roast this weekend. Some nice beans ready for picking. Now my favourite outdoor 
tomato is this one and again I'm looking for trouble free crops and by trouble free I mean something which isn't going to go down with disease lots of people grow outdoor tomatoes and the tomato plants succumb to blight disease tomato blight potato blight a fungus disease called Phytophthora infestans but this variety is called mountain magic and it's got natural inbuilt resistance to disease decent sized fruits good for salads but also good for cooking these are nearly ready for picking plants are already now here probably about between four and five foot high I have actually pinched out the tips of some of the shoots because you don't want to be too greedy this plant has already produced let me get down to the bottom one two three four up to the fifth truss of fruit on those so we're getting some really good pickings from mountain magic heavy crops disease free a good tasty variety that I'd thoroughly recommend and over here alongside my fence I've got some raspberries this is one of the lovely autumn fruiting when I say autumn fruiting what varieties I've been picking these fruits literally through July we're now through to the end of August you'll get a succession of lovely raspberries for picking this one is called Joan Jay good autumn fruiting variety good crops I've even had pickings from this late in the year up until uh, November but you've, because you've got flowers still developing the bee buzzing around me here now you know that you're going to go on getting more fruits developing and ripening up so some ready for picking some just ripening up other fruits just forming but still some flowers still forming and so these are going to be giving me my late raspberry pickings here from my garden apples are developing nicely in my garden this one I grow as a tree rather than a trained form and it's a variety of apple called Spartan a really nice eating apple which will have a red skin and a white crisp juicy flesh you'll be able to polish it up nicely to give you some lovely apples for picking probably end of September into October these will be ready for picking so I'm looking forward to some crops of apples and I'll eat some and I've got a juicer so I make apple juice out of others too be lovely to be picking these in about a month or two's time and with apples because I don't want them going down with coddling moth I don't want those little maggots inside the fruits when I bite into them I use a pheromone trap which I hang in my fruit trees from around about middle end of May and this trap made of plastic has got a glue card in the middle with a pheromone capsule in, in it pheromone capsule gives off the scent of the female moth and look it attracts male moths to a sticky end so these pheromone traps are a really good way of catching the male coddling moth and if you catch the male moth it uh, hopefully hasn't had a chance to breed with the females and the moth won't be laying any eggs and I won't have any maggots inside my apples I'm growing four varieties of tomato in a greenhouse this year. My favourite is Garner's Delight. Small cherry sized tomato. Lots of people say it is the very best for flavour. I remember asking Alan Titchmosh once what his favourite tomato was. And Garner's Delight came out top of his list. Second is a variety called Shirley. Shirley is a standard greenhouse tomato, good sized crop great to grow in a greenhouse and undercover new one I'm growing this year is this one called Floridity which has lovely long trusses of fruits some people say you can get up to 20 30 even more fruits on each truss it's a little plum shaped tomato and in taste tests that people have done in the past it's come out as one of the sweetest new tomatoes it's a really good promising one I'm looking forward to growing that one and lastly I've got a variety called Akron 
Acron in trials produce one of the biggest crops of all. Um, that is uh, a new one I'm really looking forward to. Shirley and Garner's Delight have both got awards of garden merit as well. So four varieties of tomato all growing in these pots. Really looking forward to trying these this summer. Combination of varieties to put into salads and also to use for cooking and making tomato soups and sauces. And in my greenhouse, as well as a variety of different tomatoes, I've got the, the cucumbers coming on nicely. I've got this short variety called Merlin. I've got some longer varieties of cucumber. This one is called Bella. And that's given me a succession of cucumbers for picking to enjoy over the next few months. I've also been propagating my strawberry plants, any runners that have been produced. I've just taken a runner away from the parent plant, pegged the tip of it into a small pot to propagate the strawberries. And some of those runners, even though they're only just rooting, are already starting to flower and fruit. So I'll have more pickings from this year's strawberry runners to enjoy in a few weeks time. The blackberries have been magnificent. This was one of the first varieties I planted in a screen along in front of my greenhouse. And it's a variety of thornless blackberry. I do prefer the thornless ones than the thorny ones. Give you some painless pickings as it were. This is called Loch Ness. And because it flowers over a long period, it produces fruit over a long period. So I've got some ready for picking. Really decent sized fruits on this. I've got others which are just starting to swell and others which are ripening up nicely. So this has given me pickings already for quite a few weeks. And I've probably got at least another month's worth of pickings from these. So again, really good, decent sized fruits to enjoy. These are a lovely, tasty variety of blackberry. There's a lot of different thornless ones on the market, but are certainly worth checking out varieties like Loch Ness. Vigorous plants. I've already got the canes being produced, which are going to carry the fruit next year. So I've got two lots of canes. One lot have been carrying flowers and fruits this year. And next year's canes have been growing up from the base, coming up here now. And these canes will need to be tied in and trained in the autumn to carry next year's fruits. And at the same time, I'll cut out completely those canes which fruited this year. Got roses for picking, pears coming on nicely, probably giving me pickings later in October as those will ripen up. This pear is a variety called Concord, which is uh, a hybrid. It was crossed between Conference and Comis, and uh, very Conference like in flavour, in the appearance, but gives you really good crops. And one thing I do like about this pear is it's self fertile. So I've only got one pear tree and I can be guaranteed good crops every year. So there you have it, lots going on in my East Midlands garden. I've got the sweet corn just ripening up nicely behind me. That will give me some pickings in a few weeks time. I do like growing homegrown sweet corn, can't beat it, can you? So that's it, nice little roundup of what's looking good in my late August garden.